Uh, good morning, everybody. Today we're going to do some a little Egyptian homework. I'm going to do the great Mendez Stella. Uh, long live Sun Horus, the strong youth, the lord of the diadems, the glorious and golden Horus, who has crowned his father, the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, the lord of the country, the friend of Amun, to whom the sun has granted victory, the son of the sun, the lord of the diadems, Ptolemaeus, who loves the ram, who is the lord of the city of Mendez, the great god, the life of Ra, the generator, the prince of young women, the only god, the original male power of gods and men, who reveals himself in the region of light with four heads, that represents himself as the illuminator of heaven and earth by his solar splendor, as the one coming in the Nile stream, the coming one, as the one granting life to the terrestrial world, and as of heir for all men, whom the gods praise, whom the goddesses praise, in his forms of the living ram, which is rich in male power, who is the prince of deities. Uh, this is the Ptolemy, Ptolemy Stella and Philadelphus, uh, 284, uh, 264 to 284 B.C., married to... Uh, Arinose II, Ram Bandajet, an early fertility god, since the old kingdom rams have been kept at Mendez and buried in, the, in a hieroglyph and underground burial site. In Greco-Roman times, animal cults became more popular than ever. ever. Uh, Ptolemy uh, and Arinos worshipping the ram the excellent God, the King, the divine Ram, Herodias. Now the reason why those of the Egyptians whom I have mentioned do not sacrifice goats, female or male, is this. The Mendesians count Pan to be one of the eight gods. Now these eight gods say they came into being before the twelve gods. And the painters and the image makers represented in the paintings and in the sculpture the figure of Pan. Just as the Hellenes, the Hellenes is going to be 300 B.C., do with the goat's face and legs, not supposing him to be really like this, but to resemble the other gods. The cause, however, by why they represent him in this form, I prefer not to say. The Mandesians then re reverence all goats and all males more than females, and the goat herders who have greater honor than the other herdsmen. But the goat, one especially, is revered. When he dies, there is great mourning in all the Mendesian district, and both the goat and Pan are called in Egyptian tongue Mendes. Moreover, in my lifetime, there happened in that district this marvel, that is to say, a he-goat had intercourse with a woman publicly and was done so that all men might have evidence of it. Okay. The excellent God, the image of the divine ram, the living portrait of him, him who dwells in the region of light, the divine efflux of the prolific ram, the generator of, with edifices, his eldest son of the ram, the creator of that which exists, who is enthroned on the seat of the prince of the gods, the splendid symbol of the divine throne heir of names who was received through him to become lord and king, the son of the king, born of a queen, to whom was given royal dignity over the land when still in the material womb. Before he was born, he had already become possessed of the rule. On the day of his election, he became king, resting on the breast of the beauteous and amiable mistress, his father's manly power, the holy ram in the meadow of Mendez was equal to that of the king, for he is the holy ram in the meadow of Mendez, for he is victorious, a master of strength, strong of hand. When he takes his sword, he combats an open field, strong amidst the battle fray. With vic victorious hand, he conquers his adversaries. He is of shrewd spirit, virtuous heart, repelling repulsive things, full of truthfulness, a friend of legal order, thoughtful of bringing back quiet, quietude to Egypt. He protects the holy houses, is of an iron protector by her natives. 
powerful in virility, universally adorned and feared in all lands. Adoration is granted to him, and all men shout at his appearance, he being the protector, loving, to execute his good intentions for the welfare. All sanctuaries are filled with his gifts, and both parts of the country rejoice in his special kindness. The king, therefore, turned his cares to the holy realm, the lord of the city of Mendez, since he knew it is this God that is invoked for the kingdom which is in his hands. On account of his predilection for the royal holy rams, there should be elevated to the throne a new appearing live ram as it occurred from the beginning of his royal accession. The holy animal was to be elevated on his seat and his ascension solemnized in the way as for former kings. Thus began the festival of accession. His majesty occupied the forepart of the ram boat of the, this god, descending the great stream and upwards on the central canal, Aachen, just as his royal predecessors did, to complete all things customary in his accession as it is prescribed. On arriving in the city of Mandaz, as in Anap, his majesty ordered him to be led forth to his throne chamber, and behold, he was behind his god, thus showing his love to his lord. They did thus arrive at the holy place, al Nuturi, the seat of his enthronement from the oldest time. His majesty visited the ed edifice of the holy rams, finding the ram temple still building as his majesty had ordered. Excluding the foreign workmen, his majesty ordered the Ephesus for eternal use to be completed speedily. His majesty, besides the inspection, inspected the most dwelling chamber of the splendid ram, which was also to be renewed, and he ordered one of the superior officers of his retune to execute all the work in the best manner. For the holy ram in Anap, where he was enthroned on his seat, his holiness, then went through all prescribed customs in the temple, desiring to show in every form honor to the holy rams, corresponding to the ceremonies as ordered by the god Thoth, this being finished, His Holiness went to his residence, and his heart was overjoyed on all that he had done for his father, the royal dignified, the living ram of Anap. May they grant him long life and joyous reign. When His Majesty returned home, he wished to reunite the first of his consorts, Nefef Akan, Ankh, Netef Ankh, with the goddess Baabet and he gave her the following tide of honor, the amiable princess, the beauteous, loveliest, fairest, and crowned one, who has received the double diadem, whose glory fills the palace, the friend of the holy ram, and of the name of his priestess, Utaba, sister of the king and wife of the king, who loved him, the princess of the country, Arisone. In the year 15, month, Pecornus, that the tenth day was appointed for the queen's holy consecration and her introduction into the temple after the divine lady had received the holy anointing. During her interval of four days, she appeared as a consecrated soul, and there were rejoicings for her in a nap. And her festival was solemnized to and live her holy soul at the place of the living rams, and was always custom married to the rams of all gods from ancient times unto this day. Thereupon, another ceremony was performed in honor of the queen, in the form granted to all goddesses, who there received life a second time, scattering the fumes of incense over her, and each day of the ten-day week. His majesty further commanded that her ram images should be placed in all temples. This was very pleasing to her, prophetess, her prophets that should be founded like the deities on account of her benevolent thoughts for all mankind. And she was crowned in the presence of the assembly crowd and rejoicing in her. They were women who were amongst them and she received the name, the beloved of the Holy Ram, goddess, the beloved of her royal brother, Philadelphus, Arsino. As for his majesty, he chose out of his suit the fairest youths among the children of the Egyptian guards, 
but chose their captains from the children of the warrior caste and of the Mendesian name. Further, the king showed his favor to the same name after this manner, as regards namely the navigation toll of all Egypt, which they had to pay to the royal house. His majesty ordered that no ship toll could be demanded on the vessel of the Mendesian meadow in its entire extent, except they, its dwellers, had spoken before his majesty, and that they had never paid the toll from the times of the gods to the accession of his divine majesty. Further, corresponding to what had been done by his father, the divine king, in former times, as regarding the appropriation of bread of all the cities to be sent as tribute to the royal house. His Majesty ordered that no bread tribute should be paid as regards the Ram Temple and its district, nor its name, just as was done by Thoth, the model of kings. And see, they had spoken further to the king regarding the revenues in the Temple of Mendez serving to pay for the sacred offerings, to extend the district of its sanctuary, and to complete all that was needed for its temple. If there was a deficiency in its products for a long time, sorrow prevailed amongst the people. If there was plenty of provision, joy prevailed amongst them. For the entire wealth of the soil rests on the inundation of the Nile that bringeth its products. Therefore His Majesty ordered that the inhabitants of Mendesian names should not pay tax more than 7,000 pieces of money at the beginning of each year, to be their tax to the royal house forever afterwards. Such a thing never happened in the time of any kings who lived before him. The whole country rejoiced unto heaven and burst into hymns of thanks at the royal name of his majesty. Another proof of his favorable care for the temple of the Mendesian deity was exhibited, exhibited by his majesty in the deed, namely in the year 21. It was announced to his majesty, The temple of thy father, the holy ram, of the lord of Mendez is completed in all of its edifices, it is much fairer than as ever was before in compliance with the orders of thy majesty. The inscriptions were chiseled in thy name, in the name of thy father, and in the name of the divine lady, Philadelphia's Arisino. May it please thy majesty to execute the solemnity consecrating the sanctuary to the God. The year 10, the month 4 of the 10th day, occurred the festival in the temple till the 16th day. Then did heaven and earth rejoice. The holy ram was led into his temple to be enthroned in his place of honor, and all other deities assembled in their chambers in the ram's shapes, for the whole country had each town its ram deity, and every vale had its ram-headed hawk shape. Thus was commanded, ordered his majesty. And the rest of the festival was solemnized in the presence of the officials, his majesty, when the temple was thus solemnly handed over its to divine possessor, and when they had left for the royal residence to rejoice the heart of his majesty, and in their suit the prophets, who carried flowers, pleasing to his majesty, and his majesty presented to the temple native gold, wheat, robes, and all good things to dignify the God and his sanctuary. The year 10 and the month 4 it was announced to His Majesty in these words, Please to let the living Holy Ram be brought from the field in the west of the city of Mendez, to place it where it was found in the neighborhood of the pylons lying near the palace, and that Thy Majesty may place it on its throne. Let the sacred scribes of the temple approach from certain places of the country that they may examine the holy animal, and there assembled five kemsets, from their cities. After the sacred scribes of the temple had inscribed the animal, they acknowledged its symbolic meaning after the ruler of the divine prescriptions, and it received the following title, the ram, the life of Ra, the ram, the life of Shu, the ram, the life of Set, the ram, the life of Osiris. After this was done, His Holy Majesty's officials came to tell him, given to him are the holy titles Thy Majesty scribes of the temple, his dwelling is entirely completed according to Thy Majesty's order. May Thy Majesty order the Holy Ram to be placed on its throne. I'm going to stop here and finish in the next video.